For sickle cell disease, part of their disease is they are more at risk for dehydration because they can't concentrate their urine. So the very first time a patient says they're having pain, whatever, we want them to increase their fluid intake. Um, we want them to do hot, cold, not hot, cold, hot baths, um, heating pads, hot packs, massage is really good for them. Um, also distraction, moving, not doing things. And then of course the medical team will prescribe things like ibuprofen, NSAIDs, uh, we do SSNRIs. <clears throat> there are cures currently being studied, one being the uh, stem cell transplant and then gene editing. They're both still in clinical trial phases. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in the next 10 years, they will likely be the standard of care. A few cases, we haven't gotten to the end of the grant where we've analyzed our data yet, but we've had several patients that we've reduced their MMEs per day by 50 to 75 percent. So we're already seeing success. We're also, it's been like a quality improvement for us because we were not doing the same thing for all of our patients. So we have patients that we've maximized their adjuvant therapies, which has caused them to use less opioids. We've also found complications that were there, that the patient was complaining of pain, those things that we could send them um, to surgery to repair and it also decreased their opioid utilization. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing for the mental health. We had patients that had untreated depression, anxiety. We've been kind of skirting the issue with them. They've been resistant to treatment, resistant to counseling. And this really puts the hard fast. We're not changing your, you know, or increasing your opiate until this is addressed. Um, and some of them have gotten better and have been able to decrease their opiate use. And improve mm -hmm. their quali quality of life. We do have patients that really manage their diet component because sickle cell disease has an inflammatory response in the body. So they stay away from red meat, pork, um, any kind of processed food that also causes an inflammatory response in your body. Um, but it's not something that can be controlled just with sickle cell. We always say sickle cell is disrespectful um, because you can do everything perfect and it still will mess up your day. It will still put you in the hospital. It's just unpredictable and uncontrollable. So we want to control for as many things as we can. Unlike diabetes where you can exercise, you can eat right, you can guarantee good results, we can't do that with sickle cell disease. Now does it help that they eat a healthy diet? Absolutely, because it prevents other things, but there are not like five or six steps that if you do this, you're going to do well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like cholesterol. For some people diet helps and makes a big difference and some people, no matter what they do, they've got to take the pill. Not necessarily. Sickle cell disease is very much a spectrum, and so some patients do really well, and we don't really always know why they do really well and need very little pain management, need very little healthcare utilization. Um, and then other patients are sick kind of very early on, and you know, that's kind of the magic question if we could figure out why some patients do better than others. Um, but it really is dependent on the patient. We always tell new patients um, or parents of new patients, they're eight weeks old when they come to the pediatric clinic, um, that we kind of have to wait and see how they do. We don't, won't know what their life is gonna look like until they get older. There are no really predictors or indicators mm -hmm. on how, how well a patient will do or how many disease-related complications. Mm -hmm. It's not very well understood.